Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of longer term technical analysis on Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets. And more specifically, we're going to be doing some long term technical and fundamental analysis on Bitcoin because in today's video, I want to present to you the number one piece of evidence and the number one visualization that proves to you guys beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Bitcoin bear market is over. We are currently in an accumulation phase and that we will be entering a new bull market in the next six months or so. We're going to be zooming out doing a lot of long-term technical analysis, and I do believe this is going to blow you guys' mind. So without much further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Since there has been some happenings here over the last 24 hours or so on the short-term chart, we will do a little bit of short-term TA here at the beginning of the video, and then we'll get on to the main point of today's video. Anyway, what we saw recently is that Bitcoin ran up to around five thousand, excuse me, six thousand five hundred and forty dollars, and we've recently pulled back down to around exactly six thousand three hundred dollars, which is exactly where I expected Bitcoin would pull back to. I expected the Bitcoin pull back to in between sixty three hundred dollars and this uptrend of support right here, which can be drawn about like that. In between about sixty two fifty and sixty three hundred dollars is where I was expecting this pullback to come, and it looks like that's basically what we've seen. Looks like Bitcoin is setting a little bit of a bounce in motion here. We very well may be headed lower from here. I wouldn't be surprised if we came down and tested this uptrend trend of support that Bitcoin has been above for several months now. That would actually be rather healthy in my opinion. But that's basically all the short-term TA we're going to do today. We are going to do the crypto market recap. There's not a whole lot to discuss on the short term, so this is a great opportunity for me to show you guys this because this is one of the guiding principles, this is one of the guiding pieces of evidence for why I've been saying for so long that the bear market is over and why the bull market has begun. But let's go ahead and do the crypto market recap first and then we'll get to that. Let's give coin market cap a little refresh here and what we're going to see is that Bitcoin across all exchanges is trading just over $6,400. That's the average price of Bitcoin across all exchanges. And we're up just a little bit over the last 24 hours. Bitcoin has been moving up ever so slightly in the last couple of hours. As you can see here, we set that little bounce in motion somewhere around 16 hours before I'm recording this video. Ethereum is currently trading at $212 across all exchanges. The reason I'm saying across all exchanges is because there is a slight discrepancy in price action for Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, and several of the other altcoins that you see traded over US dollar Tether and also over actual US dollars because Tether hasn't totally totally equalized right now. It's looking rather good right now, right around 99 cents, but we do see a little bit of a discrepancy between Tether and US dollar pairings, for example, on Coinbase here and on Bitfinex that still hasn't really cleared up in the way that we would like to see. Anyway, XRP is doing rather well, up about 1.25% over the last 24 hours. I'm quite happy with what XRP has done recently. I like that it's getting away from that level of support at 45 cents, and I would like it to stay above that level of support at 45 cents. I have a buy order down in here where I bought some XRP down here around 45 and a half cents which equates to about, I think it was about 7,100 Satoshis down here. And I'm going to be holding that for the long term because I do think 7,000 Satoshis is a rather strong level of support for XRP. Fear to throw some XRP TA in here at the outset of the video. Anyway, if we sort by change over the last 24 hours, we're going to see Pundi X and Reven are up by over 10%. I can't think of a pun on them. So I guess we'll just scroll down here and see if we have anything else that bears fruit and it doesn't look like we do. Basic Attention Token and Nexo are the two biggest losers today. Basic Attention Token is taking all of the attention again, or at least it's being overshadowed by Nexo, which has taken the attention next. <laughs> I found something. Anyway, we do see both of them are the biggest losers today. Not very big losers though. We don't see any double digit losers, but we do see a little bit of red. If we zoom up here, then what we're gonna see is the market is perhaps ever so slightly more red than green. Basically just a neutral day right here. And that kind of shows itself in the top 10. We do see a little bit of red. We see a little bit of green. You know, it's just one of those days where not a whole lot is happening. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get on to the main point of today's video. And before we do, I could feel it coming. I have a cold, guys. So if my voice sounds a little bit different, that's because I'm stuffed up. That'll probably go on for the next couple of days. So I do apologize for that. But I think we can still make it through. I think we'll survive. I haven't missed, a, I haven't missed an upload in like three months. So I think we'll be okay. Anyway, the first thing that I want to do like I said, this is what I'm about to show you is a visualization of how I understand the market, how I look at the market, and why I believe that the Bitcoin bear market is over. Now, there's plenty of different technicals that show me the bear market's over. There's plenty of different fundamentals that tell me the bear market is over and a bull market is coming. All of those things are important, and I am about to roll all of those things over into what we're about to discuss. But it's extremely obvious what I'm about to show you if all you do is zoom out. I've talked about so many times on the channel the importance of perspective, not only in looking at markets in life in general, whenever you're trying to do anything, it's a very important thing to get perspective and get an understanding of the entire situation of what you're in. You don't want to be zoomed in here on the 15 minute chart and looking at the little market right here and then saying, okay, well, what's it going to do? I don't know. I have no idea and not zoom out and look at the longer term trends and see what Bitcoin is actually doing. You don't want to be shorting 
at $6,000 because you didn't realize that $6,000 is the most important level of support for Bitcoin in all of Bitcoin technical analysis right now, simply because you were zoomed in too far to understand its significance. Do you understand that? It's very important that you zoom out and get perspective. And with that in mind, let's go ahead and zoom out and look at the chart. Something is very striking to me about this chart right here. This is the Coinbase chart. That's why it terminates over here in 2015, but that's irrelevant. We only need to see this much of it. Something is very, very striking about this. Can you, I'm going to give you guys a second. Can you see what it is? Let me start getting rid of these trend lines here. I get rid of $6,000 as a level of support, that uptrend, that level of resistance right there. What shows itself very, very clearly here, guys? Well, if you look at this chart, the very first thing that jumps out to me is this flat bottom right here. We see this flat bottom right here. It doesn't seem that if we zoom out here and we look at the market that Bitcoin can go below $6,000. It seems that we've come down to it so many times and Bitcoin has lost all of its momentum and hasn't been able to get below it in any way, shape, or form. And it doesn't look like it's ever going to again. If we were to flip this chart upside down, I think you can do it over here, but we're not going to do it right here. If you flip the chart upside down, then it looks like a very strong level of resistance. It looks like a level that you're not going to get through. And if you zoom into more medium-term technical analysis, that proves itself too because we've been getting further away from it with this uptrend right here. Bitcoin has been setting higher lows, getting away from the need to go down to $6,000, which is another point in the favor of my opinion that Bitcoin will hold support at $6,000 indefinitely. But that's not the only thing. The second thing that really jumps out at me at this chart is this little trend right here. If you come over here to where the paintbrush is, you can get a curve right here. You click up here and then you click down here and then you drag this out a little bit. And that kind of represents the curve of Bitcoin. The, um, the inverse exponential downtrend that the bear market has been in for the for all of 2018, really. Because what we saw with 2016 and 17 is that Bitcoin was going parabolic. It was moving rather slowly here into 2016, kind of slowly here at the outset of 2017, and then towards the end of 2017, it went to the moon. It blasted off like a rocket ship, and all the moon memes rejoiced. But the exact opposite happened here in Bitcoin where we started the year going down very, very quickly and now we've lost all our steam and we're coming down here kind of asymptotically down to $6,000 as a level of support. So much so that when you zoom out at this, at this uh, distance, you can't even really see the market moving up and down. It just kind of looks like it's trading sideways, which it is because we're in an accumulation phase. But what does all this mean? There's two main things that I can take away from this. The main thing that I can take away from this, from $6,000 being such an obvious level of support and that small and that small little short-term uptrend I drew a second ago, what I take away from all of this is that $6,000 is not going to be broken. It seems to me that if $6,000 was going to be broken, it would have been broken back over here when we when we temporarily went below it and breached it and had to go down to $5,750. If we were going to stay below $6,000, it seems to me like we would have done it already because if we were going to do it if we weren't going to do it then, why are we going to do it now, guys? The fundamentals have done nothing but got better. A lot of the people that were leaving the space are gone. I see nothing but people coming into the space now. I don't see anybody leaving the space because if you're still here, guys, I've told you guys this many times. If you're watching this video when the day it goes live or for the next three months and you're still in this market and you've been here ever since the beginning of the bear market, you guys got balls of steel and you're not going anywhere. A lot of the people that were going to leave, in fact, I would, I would wager that most of the people that were going to leave the market have already left. And they might come back in the next bull run, but for right now, they're gone. And since they're gone, we don't need to worry about their money leaving the space and pushing us below $6,000 because we're losing market capitalization. Do you guys following me here? All the bearish fundamentals, all the bearish fundamentals that were bearish back then, back over here in May and June, that were pushing us down towards and potentially below $6,000, and in fact, below $6,000, they've either evaporated or they've started to get more bullish. So what's the deal? Are we going to go below $6,000 now when the market and the fundamentals are looking even more bullish? I don't think so. I don't think that makes any logical sense. I really don't see why we would go below $6,000 short of a major fundamental change or a massive amount of manipulation that would probably land some company under federal investigation. I really don't see any way that we would end up going below $6,000 at the moment. It doesn't just make any sense to me. And that's only one of the points I want to make here. The second point is this little downtrend, this little uh, sloping downtrend, this curve that I just drew a second ago. That's really important also because what have we seen we've seen the bulls and the bears have both lost strength we've seen that the bears have lost strength because they were able to pull off this major thing right here where they've lost 66 percent of market value at the beginning of the year but now they can't even push us 10 percent below where we currently are to go below six thousand dollars guys the bears are a lot weaker now than they used to be but so too are the bulls the bulls are extremely weak right now we see this in this little short-term rally that we saw build up right here where we saw bitcoin only move five percent clearly the bulls aren't very strong and clearly the bears aren't very strong we've had the trading range and the volatility that we're 
we're in be constricted because we're coming into the end of a bear market. That's what you almost always see moving into an accumulation phase. And my other point is that if the bears were able to pull off this major kind of downtrend right here and push us down here towards $6,000 as quickly as they did in May and June, and they still couldn't breach $6,000, how are they going to do it when all they can do is push us down 2 or 3% here in the last couple of days after a rally failed? I just don't understand it, guys. Tell me in the comment section down below if you guys are still bearish, if you still think we're going below $6,000. By what mechanism, I ask you? I'm not... I'm not I'm not yelling at you guys. I'm getting I'm getting excited because I like the argument. I'm not yelling at anyone here. I, I want to make that clear. But I am very curious to hear you guys' opinions in the comment section down below. If you think we're still going to go below $6,000, you might want to hold off a second because the best part of my argument, or at least the strongest part of my argument, in my opinion, is still coming up. But I really don't think it's going to happen. I really don't think we're going below $6,000. And let me explain the last reason why. There's a little chart that I've been drawing on this, uh, that I've been drawing to show you guys this for a very long time. I believe the first time I, I drew this chart and showed you guys this was back over here, was back in probably February or March. And the chart goes like this. We see an uptrend right here. This is one uptrend and we see one downtrend right here. What are these two trends? This one right here is P. This right here is P. This is the price action of the market. Obviously, price action for Bitcoin has been going down generally. We've been seeing this downward curve right here. Bitcoin's price has been generally getting less and less and less for the entire year. But what have we seen improving? We've seen I improve. What is I? I is the underlying intrinsic value of the market. And a lot of people have said, well, Jeb, how do you know where I is? You can't really tell where the underlying intrinsic value of the market is, what Bitcoin is actually worth, in other words, because a lot of people will say that, well, Bitcoin's worth right now $6,368.07. I agree. There's two different ways that you can define value of a market. You can define the nominal value, the dollar value, which is what that is, and you can define the underlying intrinsic value of a market, which is what the market is really worth and what people in the long term, based on the fundamentals and the technicals, are willing to pay for it. And what we've seen here in 2018 is a very interesting trend. We've seen that price action has continued to go down and underlying intrinsic values continue to go up. But I've said that many times. That's nothing new. But what is new is this. Guys, one thing you have to realize about long-term technical and fundamental analysis is that as you zoom out on a chart and you're zoomed out as far as we are right now, technical analysis becomes a little bit less important. It's still a very major player when you're looking at markets, but then comes in fundamental analysis. Then comes in the really important thing, which is the underlying intrinsic value of the market, which is the fundamentals of the market, which is the retail adoption of the market, which is the institutional investor's interest of the market, which is the uh, uh, the utility of the, uh, of the asset in the market, which is all of the things that build up the market other than the price action. And all of those things have proven to us that we're not going to go below $6,000. If the underlying intrinsic value were below $6,000, this is the main point of the whole video, so listen to this. If the main, if the underlying intrinsic value of Bitcoin were below $6,000, then why after 10 months are we not trading there? If the underlying intrinsic value of Bitcoin were below $6,000 and we were destined to go down here somewhere, why haven't we done it yet? I don't understand the argument that we're going below $6,000 because if we were going to go below $6,000, why haven't we done it yet? Where is it? I don't. I mean, it doesn't look like we're going to do it based on everything I've just shown you guys today. Where is it? I really don't see it happening. How are we going to go below $6,000? By what measure are we going to go below $6,000? What's going to push us below $6,000? I mean, sure, some fundamental news story that none of us could have expected might come out, but you can't build your argument off of, a, off of a what if that you have no way of proving is actually going to happen or not. If we were going to see the underlying intrinsic value of Bitcoin go below $6,000, and indeed, if the underlying intrinsic value of Bitcoin were below $6,000, that's the very important part. Why haven't we gone down there yet? The fact that we've held $6,000 so strongly as a level of support here in 2018 proves to me that the underlying intrinsic value of Bitcoin is above $6,000 because if it weren't, we would be trading down there right now. And that is extremely important because I've said for a very long time that we're somewhere here on this chart where price action is below underlying intrinsic value. And since that is the case, we're going to fill this gap in eventuality. And a lot of people have said to me, Jeb, well, how do you know where the underlying intrinsic value of Bitcoin is? That's really kind of this nebulous thing that you can't go and prove. But I just did. If Bitcoin, if the underlying intrinsic value of Bitcoin were below $6,000, why aren't we there? I'm saying that so many times to drill it into your head. If the underlying intrinsic value of Bitcoin were below $6,000, why after 10 months have we not gone there? That proves to me that the underlying intrinsic value 
is above $6,000. And if it's above $6,000 by more than 5%, that means we're below it. And that means we have more room to grow in the future, moving on to the next bull run. I do believe that the value of Bitcoin is much, much higher than that for many reasons other than technicals, guys. You have to look at the fundamentals as well. We have a lot of amazing fundamentals coming up. We have back launching in December with a decision on the Bitcoin Van Eck uh, ETF coming up in, uh, I think it's, uh, it's, well, it's the first quarter of 20, uh, 2019 anyway. We have a lot of bullish things coming in like Fidelity stepping into the space. We have a lot of major institutions who have already bought a lot of Bitcoin and have a vested interest in Bitcoin going up so that they can make their money and then exit the market in the next bull run coming into the space. There's basically nothing but bullishness right now, guys. The technicals are different. There are some bearish things on the technicals, but I'm very happy with the technicals overall. And the fundamentals could not look better. Ask me that answer yourself this one question coming into the end of the video because this was the whole point of the video If Bitcoin hasn't gone below six thousand dollars yet, then where is the underlying intrinsic value of Bitcoin? It's not down here. It's not somewhere down here because if it were then six thousand dollars would have broken guys That's one of the most important ways to gauge the strength of a level of support or resistance is trying to figure out the underlying intrinsic value of the market and then deciding if the market is above that under if the level of support or resistance is above that underlying intrinsic value or below it and since we haven't gone below six thousand dollars that proves to me that the underlying intrinsic value of bitcoin is above that and that means that more than likely we are below the underlying intrinsic value and we should be moving up there again into the future tell me in the comment section down below what you think of that analysis i think it's valid tell me if you think so as well i am interested in to in excuse me i have a cold guys it's throwing me off I am interested to hear your opinions in the comments section down below. As always, I'm a little less articulate now than I would like to be. Anyway, guys, if you're interested in learning how to do technical analysis as well, there's a link to check out CT2A, the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy, in the description down below. Like I said, in the next week or so, probably sometime during the next week in uh, one of the weekdays, I'm going to be launching five more videos to the course. I'm not releasing the actual date. I'm going to do it just yet. But there are going to be five new videos released into the course, and then 24 hours after I release them, the price is going to be rising to $149. I do recommend getting in the course before you actually uh, before that price rises of course if you guys want to pay me more i'm more than happy to let you do that but if you click the link down below you can see everything we cover over there i do think it's a very good product and if you pay 99 dollars right now then you will get every single video that's ever added to the course into the future of which there will be many anyway guys i do hope you enjoyed this video and i do want to thank each and every single one of you for watching as always and i will see you guys in the next video peace